I, I really I really appreciate my mom. We've been through a lot as well. I moved to Florida when I was like 12, 13, and it was a, it was a, it was a rough patch because my mom went through hard times. That was like when the recession was going on, and uh, she lost a two bedroom apartment that we shared. And when we kind of got back on our feet, we stayed in a one bedroom. She's, you know, independent. She was just, you know, trying to do her thing. Um, <laughs> and my mom, she used to always smoke cigarettes because she was getting stressed out so much, right? And I was, I was of the generation. Y'all grew up with the uh, Dare to Be Different program and stuff. Remember the Dare and McGriff the Crying Dog? So her, her, her cigarette smoking would bother the hell out of me, right? Because I, you know, I really believe in what those commercials were trying to tell us. Like, you know, smoking kills brain cells, right? And I would try to do that with my mom when she's having one of her smoking sessions, right? And that's just not the thing to do. You can't be interrupting black women when they in their smoke sessions, right? Because black women, it's like a whole mood they create. Let me, let me make y'all understand, right? They have candles lit. there would be Mary J. Blige playing in the background. And we talking like 90s Mary J. Blige, like, you know, my life. What's the 411? Not the Mary J. Blige singing for Burger King chicken commercials. Not that Mary J. Blige. <laughs> Let's take a look at my life. Have you seen the things that I see, Mary J. Blige, right? So I go to her like, Mom, why, why you gotta be smoking though? I know you stress and all that stuff, but why you gotta smoke? And my, my mom's like, look, get out of my face. I'm not trying to deal with you right now. Just leave me alone. Leave your mom alone. And I'm like, no, Karen, I'm not gonna let you do this to yourself. I'm not gonna let you smoke. Smoking kills brain cells. And then I made, you know how they used to have, have the commercials where they'd have the eggs and then they would like crack the egg and then be like, this is your brain on drugs. So I took an egg from the fridge and cracked it. I'm like, this was what's gonna happen, mom, if you keep smoking. This is, this is your future. And she's like, Nicholas, get the fuck out of my face. I ain't playing with you, boy. Leave me alone. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna let you do this to yourself, Karen. So I took the cigarette out of her hand. I broke it, took the pack, threw it in the garbage and uh, you know, Took, it, took the stand to my mother and uh, she gave me this look. And then that's all I remember because then I woke up in the hospital like three hours later. <laughs> she fucked me up and I blacked out, man. That's, that's a life lesson. Just let them smoke, they fuck. Let, let them ruin their lungs. This is not worth it. Let them blow up their fingers. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Shit, it was an awkward train ride home, man. We sat on separate ends. Came home, went straight to my room. After about like 30 minutes, my mom, she came in to check on me. She was, because she, she wanted to apologize. She was like, Nicholas, look, I'm sorry what I happened earlier, but you can't be just fucking taking my cigarettes. Nicholas, Nicholas, are, are you smoking? I'm like, listen, Karen, I'm pretty stressed out right now. <laughs> now is not a good time, mom. <laughs> you got a Mary J. Blige CD I can borrow, mom. Can I get that? I'm just married, just married, just married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I learned. I learned.